For 364 days a year, San Francisco is a party town. Cars and cabs take women in gowns and men in tuxedos down roller coaster hills to party somewhere. Parties on Knob Hill and in Chinatown, in the financial district in North Beach, every day except on Christmas Eve. When men remember their families and go home to warm fires and eggnog, and the city becomes calm. For me, this Christmas Eve was the calm before the storm. It's hot. It's supposed to be. That's why they call it hot buttered rum. Are you planning on staying? Can I? No. I want to watch my kids open their gifts. I'll send you a photograph. Hey, it's two hours into the city and it's Christmas Eve. Am I nice it used to be? We wake up chair in my pajamas and watch the kids playing with their gifts. Was nice. But your pajamas have long since gone to the goodwill. It's about all the goodwill I get around here, huh? You got a hot buttered rum, you get a kiss on the cheek and a Merry Christmas. Can't have everything. Can I have anything? Kiss. Goodbye as you go out the door, back to your apartment in the city. That's it, huh? Well, I don't want to make Santa miss his appointed rounds. <laughs> She didn't buy my let me watch the kids open their presents line. But I knew if I had pressed her, she would have let me stay. If I had, I wouldn't have been driving down that lonely, rainy road, and I wouldn't have stopped for that one cup of coffee at that roadside cafe. They say hindsight is 2020. I should have pressed her. Bojangles. I'm sorry, that's a small joke. Very. 
Coffee, please, Black. No, I once knew a guy in Berkeley drew his own Christmas cards. Hi. Maybe. He had Santa Claus strung up on a crucifix. Jesus meditating in a full lotus position at the foot of the cross. Why? Protest. Against what? Not against anything. Just protest. Ah, <laughs> oh, Mr. Bojangles. I suggest you find a better nickname. You know what you get when you bury black guys up to their necks? Afro turf? So how about a ride into the city? I wouldn't give you a ride to the cemetery. Oh, come on. It's Christmas Eve. I'm gonna hassle this waitress here all night, drive me away, you'll be doing her a favor. You sure will. How far are you going? I live in Sausalito. No dialogue. Naturally. In the glove compartment. What are you on anyway? Mom, nothing. Reds? Right. I'm expecting a phone call. Maybe she'll keep trying. Come on, use it, huh? Michael Brennan, private investigator. So you're the original Sam Spade. Don't press your luck. No, how much you charge, you know, to find somebody? Too much for you. My old lady, she's split. Divorce will cost you 50 bucks. We got four years together. Be grateful. She's so beautiful, man. They're always beautiful. She got big blue eyes. She can't keep her eyes closed even when she's sleeping. Real freaky, man. Did she say why she left you? She said she loved me too much to stay. Buddy, you want a private investigator? Try the phone book. Maybe you need some time to think it over. I just did. Brennan, I once bought a dog from a black guy. When he climbed up on the furniture, I yelled, get down. That dog would start to snap his fingers and dance. Oh, God. I didn't know his name then. I didn't want to. I had met dozens like him before whose big kick in life is to get under your skin, particularly if it's of another color. I had discovered the best way to deal with them was by ignoring them. Besides, his type attracted trouble, and his began on New Year's Eve, right around midnight. San Francisco, we're about to welcome in the new year, so join me in the countdown. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Hey, guys, don't four, you see the flares? Three, Get out of the way, come on. Two, one. They hire an extra crew on New Year's to sweep up the confetti and pull drunks out of doorways. They pay double time because it's hard to find people who will work on New Year's. They don't want to miss the Rose Parade, the games, the hangovers, the regrets. And last night's confetti is this morning's soggy trash.
Happy New Year. Oh. Sergeant Corey, well, who in the hell is on duty? Hey, I know it's New Year's. I can hear the Rose Parade on every TV in this city. I mean, what are you guys doing anyway, huh? Watching the floats? Just a minute. Hey, why can't you find a cop? I said just a minute. Look, man, I've been robbed. My place is... Open your door. That's fast. What are you, antisocial? It's a nice suit, Brenner. Did you have a nice party here last night? Hey, I just got home and found this. Yeah, well, somebody had a nice party here last night. Corey, what are you doing here? Why don't you change your clothes first? You look like a panda bear out on a date. Then I want you to come down with me and help me solve a little problem we're having. Come down where? The morgue. On New Year's? Time and death wait for no man. Hey, is this a request? Call it a request. From this angle, you can see the difficulty in trying to handle the 200-pound back with speed mobility. Number 28, Washington, Freshman Robinson. We're on the 43 yard line of Washington. Gales I prefer velvet lapels Spice. myself. Statue of Liberty play for a small game. More de classe. Yeah, I know him. I gave him a lift Christmas Eve. How'd he buy it? Around about midnight near the bridge. He had car trouble. Set on flares and everything, just like the auto club tells you. He's fixing a fan belt, and something comes across the fast lane, picks him up, bang. Picked him up like a puppet and wrapped him around the motor of his Volkswagen. Rupture the order, crushed pelvis, compound fractures, there's blood all over the place. I really need to hear this, you know that, Corey? I think patent leather pumps are passe for men, don't you? Driver of the other vehicle split. Call it me hit and run. We got a description from a passing motorist, black van, blacked out windows, no chrome, heavy duty car catcher. So? So it's no accident, no felony hit and run, it's first degree murder, Brennan, and you're the only name we have. The two-bit dealer, Joey Robert Crawford, Sold grass, coke, acid, mostly Chinatown. Rap sheet from Washington State, nickel dime, somebody bangs him near the bridge, why? Hey, I'm not his friend, Corey, and I never go to Chinatown. We found this in his wallet. It's yours, I think. Look, I gave him a ride, huh? I don't know him, I'm not his friend. You gotta smoke those things. You tell me if you did, know him. Oh, man. Why are you taking it so hard? You just told me you didn't know him. I don't know him. I got 50 bucks on Iowa in the Rose Bowl. Yes, I do have to smoke these things. Doctor's orders. Listen, I'm not going to find out that you know more about Joey Crawford than you're telling me. Would I be that dumb? I don't know. You bet 50 bucks on Iowa. Brennan, this is Marty at the finance company. Call me back. I've got a blue wagon I want you to repossess. Your 50 bucks on Iowa is covered. Watch the game. I'll be around to collect on the second. Brennan, Joey Crawford. I guess you got your retainer by now, huh? It's to find Danny for me. I told you I need her, Brennan. I can't live without her. That's true to that. I want you to find her for me, Brennan. You can't use the grand. Uh, you return it to my houseboat, slip 10Q at Sausalito. And Brennan. Do you know what's black and brown and looks good on a black guy? A Doberman. <laughs> oh, God. Brennan. Where and when, Brennan? What? Where and when? I don't know what you're talking about. Tell us where and when, or else. 
Are you sure you got the right? Eleven men died building the Golden Gate Bridge, and over 700 others have used it as a jumping off spot to a better world. Jory Crawford was just another statistic connected with the bridge. Jory Crawford, a small time dope dealer in Chinatown, who helped me learn that Grover Cleveland's picture is on a thousand dollar bill. Jory Crawford, a slip tin Q in Sausalito, who begged me from beyond the grave to find his girl, Danny. Never was employed by a dead man before, but the thousand couldn't do Joey any good, and I like the way Grover Cleveland smiles. expect anyone to answer the door. I knew Joey couldn't. And since no one had come to identify the body, I figured Danny was still missing. But I had to start somewhere. Joey had invited me to his houseboat. I didn't think he'd complain if I took a few liberties. It's amazing how every once in a while, the things I learned in a misspent youth come in handy. Put your hands up. Hey, you're a trespasser and a thief, man. Hey, Pastor, buddy, I'm come a... on down and do it slow. I could hey. blow you away right now. Hey, man, I'm a private investigator. I'm working for uh -huh. George Crawford. You sure, keep him high. I did a stint with the Marin County Sheriff's Department. Hey, buddy, just take a look at my wallet here. You see my On ID? the ground, on your face. Hey, don't get Turn around. Put your hands behind your head. That's it. And don't move or I'll make your birth control retroactive. All you do is look at my ID. Yeah, right. Look, a black guy sneaks out of the boat. He breaks in here. What the hell am I supposed to think? Yeah. Oh, Sam Spade, huh? Good advice. Never joke with a man with a magnum. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Look, I was just looking out for my friend's property. OK, OK? Give my gun back, right? Hey, when I'm okay. drunk. Who are you, anyway? Alex Simon Simons. My boat's the first one on the key. Now, look. Look, I just look out for my friend's property because I happen to be sheriff's department, OK? You were never sheriff's man. If you were, you'd call for backup and not run in here like John Wayne. Hey, I'm looking for Joey Crawford's girlfriend, Danny. You seen her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, was she? Oh, yeah, oh. Big blue eyes. Man, get lost in those eyes. Did you get lost in those eyes, Simon? Uh, well, I'll tell you, my man, I bought her drink once. One drink? Yeah, I ran into her late one afternoon, you see. I asked her if she wanted a drink. <laughs> Those eyes, who big blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was not a man, nothing. What do you talk about doing that one drink? Oh, you know, you know what ladies talk about. I mean, you know, uh, biorhythms, uh, astrology, uh, yogurt. She, uh, 
She drank Amaretta. I remember that. Yeah, she drank Amaretta. Amaretta on ice. You seem to remember awful lot for one drink. Hey, that, that's it. That's it. Amaretta and blue eyes, okay? Huh? You hit on her, right? Hey, man, I just told you I only talked to her one time. Where did she go when she left? I don't know. Uh, oh, well, she, uh, she has a place, uh, yeah, yeah, an address at Pacific Heights. I remember Pacific Heights. What address on Pacific Heights? I don't know. Uh, you, you know what? Probably on that food stamp book you just put in your pocket. Yeah. A little more advice. You take a man down with a gun, you stick it in his ear. Joey never did tell me her last name. I guess he thought he'd be around to fill in the gaps. Danny Anatole, a street address in Pacific Heights and some scribbled numbers, 27130 and 17. Were the numbers Danny's new street address? A bank account? I didn't know. I did know that in San Francisco, Pacific Heights means old money. And people who live in Pacific Heights distinguish between old money and new money because they find new money offensive. I think threatening would be a better word because it had to be earned. The mansion in Pacific Heights reeked of old money and it and the food stamp book didn't match. Unfortunately, neither did my wardrobe. Danny Anatole. She don't live here. I'll wait till she does. Just a minute. Well, hello. Bye. I believe it's an invasion of privacy to go through other people's mail. How many people get food stamps and the Neiman Marcus catalog? Doesn't everyone? This letter from social services was sent to Danny Anatole here. Why was she on welfare? There are white people on welfare. In Pacific Heights? More than you think, Mr. The private dick. Very. Brennan. Funny, I, I don't remember a president named Brennan. Well, occasionally we were named after just plain folks. How democratic. What do you want with my sister? Who wants her? Why didn't she change her address to Sausalito? The creep. What creep? Five foot two, little weepy eyes, little runny nose. I hope she never sees him again. Says in your catalog you can buy a fireworks display for a little under $100,000. Does it? Why don't you set one off? Because Danny will never see the little creep again. Brennan, you're droll. How come she won't see him again? <laughs> Is he dead? Was he murdered? How much? How much what? Do you charge? For what? You are a private investigator, are you not? Oh, 
Hey, I'm sorry, lady. I've already been paid by one client on this case. This is to keep Danny's name out of the papers. To keep your name out of the paper. Where's your sister? Catherine? I don't know. She's a free spirit, like she says. Like the wind. She sings sometimes in saloons. A saloon singer. A free spirit saloon singer. What saloon? I don't go to saloons. Was she in the union? I'm not my sister's keeper. Goodbye, Mr. Brennan. <clears throat> Where was this picture taken? Some telephone. Sausalito days or some trash like that. Channel 3. They tape it? Now, Sugar, I ain't no media expert. I'm just seeing you out. Where did all this money come from? Fish. Anatole Fish. Fish money. Very old and very fishy. Anatole Fish Company. Whose rose is that? Mine. Everybody's drooling around here. She had song in a telethon. TV stations keep records of things like that. Telephones, sports events, disasters. A thousand years from now, when they dig up the chronicles of this time, the biggest names will be Hank Aaron, Jonestown, and Jerry Lewis. It seems like happiness is just a thing called Joe. He's got a smile that makes a lilac want to grow. He's got a way that makes the angels heave a sigh when they know little Joe's passing by. Sometime the cabin's gloomy and the table's bare. Now I know what Joey Crawford meant. Her eyes are as blue as the sea. And when she sings, it's as private and intimate as making love. Troubles fly away and life is easy go. Does he love me good? That's all I need to know. It seems like happiness is just a thing called joy. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, you sell tape machines? All kinds, partner. Got half inch, three quarter, beta, VHS, Sony, What's Panasonic. This? That's three quarter. We got beta, JVC, Panasonic. You sell on time? You got a credit card? No. Driver's license? Yeah. We sell on time. Hey, uh, you want some movies to go with that? Wetness on Sunday? No. Oh, come on. What are your favorites? Oh. Miles hadn't many brains, but he'd had too many years' experience as a detective to be caught like that by a man he was shadowing up a blind alley with his gun in his hip and his overcoat buttoned. But he'd have gone up there with you, Angel. He was just dumb enough for that. He'd have looked you up and down and licked his lips and gone, grinning from ear to ear. You could have stood as close to him as you liked in the dark and put a hole through him with a gun you got from... <laughs> May I come in, please? Sure. I am Tan Eng. Brennan. You were eating your supper. I must leave. I will return at a more convenient time. No, no, no. Come on in. Um... Can I get you something to drink? Beer, coffee, tea? A little tea, perhaps. Herb tea? You drink herb tea? Well, my wife bought it. From the mainland. If it's good enough for Nixon. Is your wife, perhaps, uh, not at home? At her home. We're divorced. I get custody of the tea. <laughs> Mr. Brennan. Look, have a seat. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Brennan, I think that uh, you are probably the very man to solve my problem. What's your problem? Uh, something has been taken from my house. 
I wish to commission you to have it returned to me. The police? Have not been informed. What was taken? I was to receive something valuable from the mainland. Let us say a piece of jade. Let us say that the governments involved exclude this particular piece from import-export. Let us say I want my jade. What's this got to do with me? Find me what I want, Mr. Brennan, so I can fulfill my commitments. Somebody broke into my apartment looking for something. Did you call the police, Mr. Brennan? What were they looking for? I would have no way of knowing. Perhaps I should go now. Why did you come to me? You came recommended. Recommended? Hey, I've been looking over transoms, chasing bad checks. Nobody knows me. Now, all of a sudden, people are recommending me. Who recommended me? Ah, that must be kept confidential as the source and the destination of the jade. Who runs the drug traffic in Chinatown? Ah, I see I was mistaken. You are not the man I was looking for, Mr. Bennett. I will go now. Wait a minute. Look, somebody wants something from me, and I don't know what it is. I don't know nothing about jade or dope, but I do know. I don't like my place being broken into. I don't like being threatened, and I don't like being considered a fool. Just so, Mr. Brennan. Goodbye. Hold it. Anatole Fish, very old and very fishy, she said. The fishing industry has always been a big part of San Francisco, and Anatole Fish looked like one of the biggest. Fishing fleet, cannery, frozen food, Anatole, old money. And I even remember the name on wine bottles from Napa. And Danny Anatole took up with a loser like Joey Crawford. Why? I'm here to see Mr. Anatole, Mr. Brennan. I don't show an appointment. What is it regarding? Fish. I am opening up a restaurant, and I want only Anatole fish. Well, uh, Mr. Anatole is busy right now. Well, I'll wait till he's unbusy. Lots of fish. Mr. Brennan here to see you. He says he wants to buy fish. Excuse me. Ah, Ruth Ann Gideon to see Mr. Anatole. Your business? I'm here to see Mr. Anatole about a job. Well, we're not hiring now, but if you'd like to fill out an application... Ricky asked me to come by. His wife's in the building. That's all right. OK, it's up to you, honey, but she's sometimes violent. That's OK. I'll just wait. I really need this job. Mr. Brennan. Thank you. Mr. Brennan, is it? Michael Brennan. Rick Anatole. I don't have much time, pal. What can I do for you? I'm a private investigator. And whose husband do you represent? Hmm? Whose husband do you represent? My wife, Lillian. I'm trying to locate Danny Anatole. <laughs> whose wife do you represent? Nobody's wife or husband, Mrs. Anatole. Just an interested party. What do you want with her, Brennan? Joey Crawford hired me to find her. Who's Joey Crawford? Her boyfriend. Well, if Danny walked out on him, it's none of my business. No, he died before I can find her. Oh, a bit of tragedy in our humdrum lives. Dead, eh? 
Air freight to Spokane tomorrow, just like a frozen fish. And why are you working for a dead man, Mr. Brennan? I was hired to find her. That's my job. Oh, that's touching. The dedication. You are dedicated and forthright, downright admirable. She has a houseboat in Sausalito. Why don't you look there? I did. She wasn't there, though. Left a little too much behind. Clothes, perfumes, stereo. Oh, so you came here. Deductive logic. I am impressed. And I'm so sorry that I can't help you, Mr. Brennan, but... Well, you understand, my husband and I, we don't see that much of Danny. Excuse me. Did Danny have many men in her life? I wouldn't know. Was she promiscuous? I'm not going to discuss her sex life with you, Brennan. <laughs> Why not? Everybody else will. They'll come up with every little piece of dirt they can think of. And you like dirt, don't you? No. Look, do you mind if I talk to your husband? Mind? Me? And what makes you ask that? It's one thing I've learned. There's a lot of sides to every story. Meaning? Enough sides. You can build a box. Ah, uh, careful, Mr. Brennan. You don't get buried in it. Mr. Anatole! Mr. Anatole? You never met Danny, did you? No. I'd like to. Danny is... Danny's Danny. Unique and original. It's not just that she's beautiful. Lots of girls are beautiful. It's that she has the kind of beauty that's hard to describe. Something special. Something every woman... You know what we fish this time of the year? Sardines. Why aren't we fishing sardines? Fish and Game Commission won't let us. They let the Russians, the Peruvians, and the Japanese, but not the Anatoles. Why seek her out for a dead man, Brennan? Joy was killed. The police think I know something about it. So does somebody else. So what do you do, wait for the sardines? No, Brennan. We wait for the soul. You understand about soul, don't you, Brennan? About Danny. Yeah. Well, like I said, beautiful. We were kids, nothing but boys hanging around. Our grandfather had to beat him away with a stick or a check. He took her in after her folks died. All the rest, he's never did have much sympathy for boys or anything else. <laughs> Good old grandpa. You and Danny are first cousins? Yeah. Where would Danny go when she left Joy Crawford? How would I know? Four years ago, she dropped out of college, didn't tell a soul, went to Seattle. She told you. Postcard. We always kept in touch. And you took the first plane north? How would you know? Lucky guess. What happened in Seattle? Scabs on her face, scabies in her hair, face broken up, hepatitis, anemic, dropped all kinds of weight. Dope. She's off it now. That's where she met Joey Crawford? In Seattle? They worked on the gutting line. He caught the crud, Danny nursed him back to health. Restored him like a classic car. He was like her child, she was like his mother. She loved him? Where's Danny now, Ricky? There's a school of Petrali Soul heading south from Alaska. We track him on radar. I've got no radar on Danny Brennan. I don't know where she is. I wouldn't tell you if I did. job. His wife wouldn't even let him see me. Where are you going? Uh, Sutter Street. The Young Women's Residence Club. You got it. You said you needed a job. What have you been doing? Um, 
babysitting for tourists. What do you babysit? Hotels mostly. I go from one hotel to another hotel. <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad of work because most of the hotels these days have these closed circuit movies in the in the rooms. And for just a measly three dollars, I can watch a movie as many times as I want. Yesterday, I saw Dr. Shivago three times. Did you cry? All three times. Are you uh, babysitting tonight? No. Tonight's my night off. Say, how about I take you to dinner? I mean, seriously, the real thing. Salad, wine, dessert, bitter coffee in those little tiny cups. <laughs> well, I'd really like to, but tonight I promised the girl next door I'd be home for supper. Some other time. I'd really like that. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. You really helped me out. Oh, don't mention it. Thanks. Um. Hey, I really meant it about dinner another night. Okay. Yeah. Um, here. Give me my number. <laughs> I really didn't mean it now. Okay, I'll call you. Huh? Okay, thanks. They say that luck is the residue of hard work. I had been working hard at finding Danny with no luck. I had learned one thing. Danny was once a junkie, and Joey was her supplier. Danny got stuck on Joey like women get stuck on their psychiatrists and men on their secretaries. They mistake dependency for love. And though it would have been easy to have gotten stuck on Danny's blue eyes, there was something else that kept drawing me back to that tape. Sometime the cabin's gloomy. Bingo. The name of the lounge she sang in, and the drummer was the file clerk I had seen at Anatole's. Maybe my luck was changing. I'm talking to you, round eyes. That's a statement of racial prejudice out there. Take the keys. Hey, Shanghai about the turn of the century. Came here in time for the tongs. Rose to chieftain, worked his way through law school, Hastings, I think, or something like that. He was big in gambling, prostitution, protection, illegal aliens, smuggled during prohibition. 
Switched to opium in the 40s, cocaine in the 60s. Cocaine? Come on, Brennan, I don't have time for this. I'm going on vacation tomorrow, right after the playoffs. Do you want to sign a complaint or can I go? What playoff? Where do you live? The 49ers. I ain't got a chance. Going to Tahoe for vacation. My wife's family has a cabin up there, right by the lake. I hate Tahoe. Hey, give me a late model Camaro. Three Chinese hoods, the driver has chipmunk cheeks. That'd be Lim Song and his boys. About a year ago, they rolled a drunk who was walking back the wrong way to his hotel. Some tourists saw it, took pictures, he went up. Came out with a high school diploma, a barber's license, and a mean outlook on life. Now, do you want to press charges or what? Could be Lim Song works for Tanang. East of Sutter Street, everyone works for Tanang. Look, I meet Joey Crawford in a cafe in Marin. He tries <laughs> to hire me to find his girlfriend who's from money, Anatole Fish Money. Is that it? Yeah. Smoke by the duck? <coughs> yeah. That's too bad. She's a member of the Anatole Fish family. Now, I know her boyfriend is Dylan and Dope in Chinatown. So is Tanang, who also tries to hire me. I'm not in the popularity contest, Brennan. Come on, Corey, stay with me here. Tanang says somebody took something from him. Next thing I know, I got three Chinese hoods trying to drive my head through a windshield, and I keep getting these calls in the middle of the night. Some guy asking me where and when. Maybe he's angling for a date. Are you going to file a complaint or what? Look, I know Joey Crawford is tied to Tanang. I know they're both dealing in dope, so Danny's got to be involved in dope somehow. But how? This is a case, Brennan, about rich people and dope and murder. But knowing you, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened to you, and that's why you can't let go. Corey was right. I couldn't let go. The hole in my windshield and the cut on my cheek had suddenly made this case a lot more personal. Craft beer and a cold glass, huh? All right. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought she was somebody else. I thought you had a band. We got no band. We had a band, but they quit. Didn't get no notice. Just called up and said they weren't coming in. Musicians. What'd you do to your face? Danny been around. Danny? Yeah, she sung in the band, Danny. No more. No more band, no more Danny. Are you a boxer? You look like a boxer. How long was she here? About a year, more, I don't know. She quit. Don't notice. Drum still here. Yeah, he left him. The drummer, the Chinese guy. No, not a boxer, something else. Baseball? Chinese guy? Davy Huey, that's his name. He played the drums, Chinese. Kind of lavender, you know. You played with the Giants, right? About Davy Huey. Lavender. No, I can find him. What do you want him for? They said he hanged out at a place called Jardine's Cave. A's, outfielder. You know where this Jardine's place is? She's not living with the drummer. He's sort of lavender, you know. Too short for basketball. <laughs> Davey, isn't this exciting? It's unusual. You know, I, um, I've seen you somewhere before. I don't remember where exactly, but... Did you go to Berkeley? Yeah, sure, I went to Berkeley. Let's remember me. I was the one who used to sit on the benches by Sproul, playing the congas. Yeah, all about the student union. That's right. Hey, what you do to your hands, Davey? Oh, too many congas. And you? Oh, racquetball. What you drinking? Tequila, Marie. Hey, buddy. So what have you been up to, Davey? This and that, hanging out. I'm a file clerk now, but I, I was in a band for a while. Won't believe this. I saw you play. The lounge down by the airport? Oh, yes. Yes, the Doric. 
He had a girl playing with him, big blue eyes. Uh, I talked to her down there. She's gonna buy a stereo from me. Well, well, maybe I can help you out. Now, now listen, this is my home phone and my address. It's like new. I mean, it's a demo. Had one cigarette burn on the right side. Well, what were you asking for? No money. She was giving me a key of good. I even went out to the houseboat. She wasn't there. When? Last weekend. Was Joey there? Oh, the little guy with the runny nose? Nah. He's crazy, man. You know, one night, he tried to kill me. Say what? The first time I go to his boat, they're having a party. He and I have some business things going on, you know? Anyway, I walk into the bedroom, and Joey and Danny and about a half dozen others are doing some lines. They must have had a mason jar of coke, I swear. Well, anyways, I stick my head a little close, just like you would have. And Joey starts screaming and jumps all over me. Some guys get wired. It got very freaky, man. What's the business deal you and Joey had going? Well, is, this, is your license MYV 889? Yeah. You better get outside. Someone have sideswiped your car or they're stripping you or something. Who told you? A guy. Oh, by the way, I also do bookkeeping. If I ever turn a profit. <laughs> I said, where and when? My luck sure had changed. I was kissing concrete instead of women. But it still felt like a warm blanket compared to playing 20 questions with a guy with a sap. Where and when? What? I didn't know. I did know that after getting told to get lost, being beaten up twice in the same day, and finding traffic more jammed than the fuckers at Jardine's cave, I was sorely in need of a friendly face. Visitors after nine o'clock. There's another, you're gonna eat it. 404. You all through with that dinner? What happened? Too much beer. My head's about to explode. Here, sit in this chair. What can I do to help? Did you drive him into my place? Sure. Go get in the shower, and I'll make some coffee, okay? 
That's great. It's over there. I have another side for your box. Danny's at Pacific Heights. didn't impress me as the helpful kind, but her call was the first real lead I had as to Danny's whereabouts, and personality judgments were not what I was being paid for. Hello, Sam. How did you get in here? The service entrance. How appropriate. I thought so, ma'am. She isn't here, so what do you want? But she was here. She left. When? Yesterday. She thought you were the police. She has an aversion to police. So you told her I was here and Joey Crawford was dead? That's right. What did she do? She locked herself in her room with a bottle of amaretto. I don't know. Maybe she loved the guy. Maybe she just felt sorry for him. But not you, Catherine. You don't feel sorry for anyone? So, how did you become a private dick? I went to night school. <laughs> and during the day? Thick cotton. Where did you go to school, Catherine? Guess. Gucci's. Stanford. Majored in tanning. No, Brennan, like you, I never had to study that. What about Danny? Majored in pharmaceuticals. Minor in business? <laughs> you don't seem to understand. We're rich. We never had to go into business. Well, maybe she left town, huh? San Francisco, she wouldn't leave San Francisco. Nobody leaves San Francisco. Nobody leaves Pacific Heights. Hunter's Point, it's easy to leave. Do you know an address 27130? You know what street that might belong to? I don't know any such address. I don't know where Danny is, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. There's nothing of interest to you here, Brennan. Nothing available to you here. You're out of your class. You jammed up my whole weekend, sugar. You know that? Oh, baby, you know I didn't want to ruin your weekend. Wicked when you lie. I was just trying to find Danny. Danny wasn't here when you were here. She was out doing trash. How did she act when she found Joey was dead? Well, she freaked. You got to when your boyfriend's dead. She ran upstairs and wouldn't come out drinking amarillo like it tastes good. Where did she go when she left? She called everybody she ever knew. On the phone with that Ricky cousin for hours. What about Catherine? In the bag with a jug of brandy. Danny made me pack an overnight case for her. I told her I wanted to go home, had things to do. 
She didn't have no money. She forgot it, she said. The banks was all closed. She tried borrowing off of me. <laughs> but with the cash this family's got, uh-uh. She ain't getting no money from this girl. All because she thought I was the heat, huh? She went through all that. Well, Danny's a fool, because she should have known you ain't the heat. You're too soft and pretty. Put your hands down, stupid. Let's keep moving. Where'd it go? Who are you working for? Joey Crawford. Joey Crawford's dead. He's still my client. What happened to your face? You ever hear a lawyer named Tanay? Well, he did this to me by proxy. He wouldn't by any chance be your lawyer. By any chance would he be your partner? I don't think I couldn't use this, Brennan. I'm a combat veteran. I know how to kill. What do you want? My grandfather hired you, didn't he? Joey Crawford hired me. You're a pawn, dummy. Don't you know that? What did you and Danny talk about so long? When? On the phone last night. We didn't speak last night. Oh? Say, what's going on, Ricky? Huh? Why the gun? Huh? Why is Danny hiding? Why are people following me, beating me up, broke into my apartment? Why don't you go ask your employer? Huh? <laughs> yeah, that should be fun. Go see the old man. But whatever you do, don't ask any more questions around here. Where do I find the old man? That's your job, isn't it? Finding people? Check the yellow pages, pal. my car and a lump on my head to remind me that a conversation I was having with another Chinese in this case had been interrupted. I had his address on a napkin from Jordine's cave, a studio off Broadway, an add-on, just like Davy Huey was to the rest of the crazies I had met so far. This bookkeeper, file clerk, drummer, what else? Stop for Davy. No bullet holes or stab wounds. And the music wasn't that bad. Cocaine is usually cut with bacon soda or baby laxative. This was cut with strychnine. Numbers on a pad, just like on Danny's food stamp book. 43190, and that's 17 again. Yeah, I sent a wagon to 640 Beaker. No need to hurry. Saturdays, half the fathers in the city pick up their kids. 
Take them to Golden Gate Park or Fisherman's Wharf. The other half are still married. This Saturday, I had my windshield fixed, drove to the house I once owned, and got a real close look at a fancy sports car. Hey! Hey! Hey, Paul! Give up! Oh, I won't give up! You lie! You'll never make me give up! What's your name? Daddy! You lie! What's your name? Okay, all right, all right, give up. Hey, boss, you got me this time. I got what you win. All right, inside. Come on, get up. Step up, Dale. Okay. Hey, boss. Hey, whose car is that? Arnold. Arnold. All right, here we go. Arnold Zola. Okay, coming through. Look out, going through the tunnel. Hey, sh Hello. I thought I'd come pick the kids up. Fine. What happened? Oh, that's nothing. Listen, uh, maybe no, I should. No, it's OK. I'm going to bring him back after dinner. OK, fine. You know, sir, you don't have to hurry home to fix their dinner. Well, Arnold and I were uh, going to go to dinner. Uh, the, the sitter will be here. Well, we're going to come back after dinner. You said that. Hey, you guys going down to park and play? Arnold has his own court. Hi, Daddy, I'm ready. Arnold. What kind of name is Arnold? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my hand, oh, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, I just shout, tip me over and pour me out. Hey, how do you feel about Arnold? He's OK. I like George better. Mr. Brennan to see Mr. Anatel. Come in. This way. Mr. Brennan. Glacierization. Huh? Coldest winter in 40 years. The glaciers are coming back. When they found the mast and Ardents in Siberia, they were flash frozen like fish sticks. They had buttercups in their stomachs. You're pretty dumb, boy. You've been snooping around, poking your nose. Boy could get his nose cut off for that. You hear about me, Mr. Anatole? Would you like some wine? Try the white. It's called Riesling. It's from my vineyards. OK, a fresh fruit, dried apples. Perhaps a bit young, but a year or two should prove its potential. I come up here for privacy, boy. Privacy is all I have left. I'm a harmless old man. Yeah, but you must have been one hell of a rum runner in your day. How'd you find out about that? Fishing fleet is good for smuggling, right? That was many years ago. Prohibition. Were you syndicate? I was never syndicate. I know them. Every runner did. But the West Coast was never theirs. People like me ran it. Amateurs, freelancers. A free economy, boy. 
Manifest destiny. It's what made this country great. You work for the Chinese bosses? I worked for whoever gave me money. Does that make me Chinese? Is that where you met Tanay? Yeah. We started out together. When Grant Avenue was DuPont Gay, and DuPont Gay bought Anatole Fish. He ran a Fantan Parlor, and I sold him booze. He's a slick old boy. Made himself a lawyer, owns half of Chinatown. I used to belong to the Ku Klux Klan, you know that? You used to? The good old days. Bilbo, Huey Long, Gerald L. K. Smith. We had real bigots then. That's my grandfather over there. He founded the company. Ran it 40 years. Never lost a boat. Never lost a man. He made deals with the Chinese. Helped them sail the bay and fish for shrimp. He bought the land for the vineyards when land here was gone for $10 an acre. Was he a smuggler too? He died in the bathtub, my grandfather. My mother and I hauled him out. It was like a beached whale. His death was the first freedom I ever had. Push me, boy. I need some air. Well, come on, come on! They don't make him like my old man anymore. Ricky, my grandson, I tried to give him the sea. He didn't want it. He doesn't want the vineyards. He doesn't know what he wants. Well, maybe you just can't give him what he needs. He's a kept man. Kept by his duty to a woman he can't stand. That's not a marriage, that's a tour of duty. Lillian, I met her. She's my granddaughter, you know that? Your granddaughter-in-law, Orestes. You damn fool, she's my granddaughter. They're first cousins, Ricky and her. My granddaughter can marry my grandson, but I'm a loathsome pervert because I sell to the mob. I don't understand. How can your granddaughter marry your grandson? It's legal in California. Don't you know nothing? How the hell can you be a detective if you don't know the law? That's what the Supreme Court did. <laughs> Take away the poll tax and whammo, chaos! Take me back, boy. I'm cold. I want to hire you. How much do you cost? More than you have, Orestes. I'll pay you double whatever they're paying you. Nobody's paying me. I'll pay you triple. I'll pay you to do nothing. Now, what would Huey Long say about that? You're interfering with my business. I don't want you around, and I want you to stay away from my family. Stick it, old now man. <laughs> Nurse, where are these idiots? Come on, kids. Well, did Arnold lose his serve? Are the kids okay with the suitor? Yeah. The Ferrari breakdown? Ara, uh, you alone? Come in. Yeah, I know, a bad clutch, huh? Lots of pickup, but no endurance. What did happen to your face? No, I shaved too high. Look, is something the matter? I mean, you don't normally drop in. I mean, you never drop in. It's a nice view. Three days a year. What's wrong? So, what case are you on? Whose mailbox are you peeking into? Uh, well, I'm stuck with a client who can't answer any of my questions. Then there's this old man, Anatole, whose granddaughter got caught up with a two-bit dope dealer. Who's my client? He's partnered with a Chinatown gangster who tried to hire me to find something for him. Six years, you know, you would come home or you wouldn't. You were always off chasing some runaway or some back alimony, 
always tilting at windmills. Davy Huey's probably the go-between. He knew Joy Crawford, he knew Tanang, and he worked at the fish company. <laughs> he knew too much. Then I got these numbers, but I don't have a street. I don't know if Ricky Anatole's involved, but I know Danny is right up to those pretty blue eyes. Somebody's got to make the connection. That's probably where Davy Huey came in. You were never home. And when you were there, you weren't there. Hey, baby. Are you all right? Honey, listen, if you got a dependable job, if you stop living this fantasy life and forget trying... And if you forget trying to be Bogart... Listen to me. Just go upstairs and be quiet, huh? It's just a start of this one. Just make noise. Just trust me. Be quiet, huh? Yourself killed, you know, I thought you were somebody else. Hello, Corey. Oh, hi, Chris. I thought he was somebody else. I heard else. some shooting. There's this car outside. You I know, don't it's, usually it's this use case this. that I'm working on. I don't even think it's loaded. Some things never change. Forget what I said about being solid and dependable, Corey. You just dropped by. Davey Huey. I told you I don't know any more than you know. What'd you tell me if you did? Huh? I mean, you wouldn't hold anything back. Look, I talked to him once, and we got interrupted. I went to his place to talk to him, but he was in no shape to yeah, talk. Yeah, I bet you left prints all over the place. More work for the guys at the lab. I was word in the street, some heavy stuff's coming down soon. When? You think I know? Would I be standing here talking to you if I knew? What's the matter with you, Brennan? Don't you know that when a crime happens, the police are the last ones to know? Droll. What's that? Nothing. Just a word I picked up. You still trying to find that girl? Yeah, I almost had her too, but I lost her. Yeah? Why don't you buy yourself a map? Later, Brennan. The homicide rate in this case had just doubled, and all I had to go on was a set of meaningless numbers and a crazy family hell bent on keeping me from Danny. Why? I felt Danny could tell me about the numbers, and the numbers would tell me why Joey and Davy died. Heavy stuff coming down soon, Corey said. What's the day? January 7th. One seven. Seventeen. Wait a minute. Get a map, Corey said. These check out. Corey may be a better detective than I thought.
You don't need that gun, Brennan. What are you doing here? Uh, checking these receipts. I don't understand. What's going on? I work for Pat Con. Detectives? Private investigators. You set me up. No, I didn't. I didn't know about you at first. Honest. Who's your client? You know I can't tell you that. Old man Anna told you. Hey, you call him about me. No. He told you to find out. No, more. that's not true. I really like you. You're wrong. That's not why I got involved with you. He's babysitting. Brennan. This is my first solo. It's important. Goodbye, Ruth Ann. Some tuna? Hey, man. How'd you like this through your ear, huh? What's the matter? You touching? Through the doors. Move. Anything you say, my man. Get going. Move. Spread them. How'd you find out? Get up there. Two seven one three zero, not a street address, a navigational coordinate. Davy had the other. Sounds like a good place to fish, but not for a Petrali soul. Very impressive, dummy. Tell me, what is it you think we're fishing for out here? My guess, cocaine. You, Alex, Tanay, Joey Crawford, Davy Huey, Danny. Tie him up. Let's get on the way.
15 key. What you pay for it? Not a thing. Then who did? Joey's partner. Tanang. So Joey got greedy, huh? Changed partners. Ended up greeting the new year on a slab. But Tanang wouldn't have killed Joey. At least not until he got his wise old hands on that keg. That leaves you, Ricky. You're navigating pretty good, Brennan. Joey out of the way, Danny missing. So Tanang hires Davy Huey to go do a little fishing at Anatole's. But before he can tell Tanang what he found out, you deep sixed him. All roads to you cut. Right on track, Brennan. Maybe you're not such a dummy. The where and when, huh? It's the days drop. But why? I don't understand. I mean, you got money, position, everything, man. What happens now? Not everything, pal. Not just yet. As for you, now, sorry, Brennan. You get dumped. Alex, cut him loose. Overboard? Me? Hey, man. I mean, you're headed north. There's a lot of small islands around Vancouver. Just drop me off at one of them. I'm not much of a woodsman. I wouldn't be back to civilization to the spring. I think over the side is a better idea. Where did you come from? Below deck is cramped. Isn't it foolish for partners to quarrel, Mr. Anatole? There is no need for violence. We simply put our guns down, dump Mr. Brennan over the side, and divide the cocaine evenly. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. Now, I was hired to find Danny Anatole. Once I found her, hey, that's when I realized what was going on. What do you mean, found Danny? I found her this morning. Tanang found her first. Bullet hole in the temple. Small caliber. Did you shoot her, Tanang? You look like a small caliber man. In the ice house, at the factory. She's dead. Frozen. No more amaretto, no more song. Her eyes won't even close, Ricky. Not even in death. You killed her? No. No, I did you not! <laughs> We were going to Mexico, Danny and me, start a new life. With the cocaine money? Yeah. Well, nothing can keep us apart now. Take it easy, I'll get you a doctor. You'll be all right. Not without her, pal. to do that. He couldn't have gone up. He would have died. He did die. Why are you dressed like a maid? Because we got big company. Didn't you? What did Pat Kahn have to say about me in their report? They said you were stupid. They said you were ignorant. They said you don't know nothing, and they're right. Sorry about your husband, Mrs. Anatole. I guess he knew what chances he was taking. That's a real nice attitude, Mrs. Anatole. Who the hell turned you loose on my family? Hey, they were smuggling long before I got involved, old man. Sooner or later, the pros would have stepped on them. You did it, boy. You're looking for somebody to blame, Anatole. Why don't you take a good look at yourself? I never had nothing to do with it, never. You told them about your liquor running days. They were amateurs. A few pounds of marijuana, a few ounces of cocaine. But no, they were listening to Grandpa's fairy tales about the good old days, about the Fantan parlors and DuPont Gay. Now, all the proof they needed that amateurs, freelancers, could get away with it. I never gave them any advice. What did you expect? Smuggling's a family tradition. You went against the pros and got out alive. And rich, manifest destiny. What other proof did they need? Why did you come back here, Brennan? To gloat? To give my final report. Oh, yeah. I won't be able to keep your name out of the paper, Catherine. Always droll. 
Joey Crawford was a small time dealer, but he had connections. Ricky had the boat, Tanang had the money. Danny put them all together. It's of no interest. I think it is. Tanang found out about Joey's intended double cross, probably from Davy Huey. He didn't kill him, though. He needed to know when and where the drop was. Enter yours truly. The fall guy. Ricky killed Joey Crawford, didn't he, Lillian? He also killed Davy Huey. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. You knew all about it. You also know Ricky and Danny were sleeping together. Oh, God. They were sleeping together, weren't they, Lillian? Ricky and Danny. Hey, he threatened to kill me if I didn't leave her alone. You wouldn't do that for a cousin, but you'd do it for a lover. She tried to stop it. Danny. But she couldn't. There was so much feeling. The young have so much feeling. You knew about it? He proposed to her. He was going to divorce Lillian. He came to me to ask permission. When did you find out, Lillian? Yesterday. He told me about the cocaine, about the money. He told me how he and Danny were going to run away to Mexico together with the cocaine money. Is that when you did it, Lillian? Is that when you killed Danny? Millions of dollars involved, and you kill her out of simple jealousy. Is that right, Lillian? Put a bullet in her head and stuck her in the ice house so Ricky could find her. I'm only sorry that you found her first. It would have been a lovely gift for Ricky. Got a real close family, old man. A lot closer than anybody ever knew. You'll probably bargain for second degree, Lillian. Get out in 10 and 12 years and come back and take over the family fish business. How's that for a future? Sensitive. You know that chord? Genoa? I heard it sing once. Good. This song sort of stays with you. Need a left downtown? Nah, I'm parked out on the street. Yeah? That's where you belong. Well, Lillian had her revenge. And Corey had a suspect in custody with a cocaine bus thrown in for good measure. And I, well, I was left with $326.40 from Joy's retainer and a hospital bill in the mail. They say crime doesn't pay. I'm beginning to be a believer. <laughs> <laughs> 